Rule two, um, I've already alluded to this, but onboarding starts pre-selection. Um, a lot of organisations do assume that onboarding starts the minute somebody steps foot inside your organisation. And as I showed you in my model, it actually starts well in advance of that. And it may well be that the first connection somebody has with your organisation is with someone who doesn't even work for you. So if you're using job boards, if you're using recruitment agencies, it may well be that the candidate is speaking with someone who's completely removed from your organisation. And so it becomes even more important that we feed those people, we feed the job boards in our agencies um, the most accurate information about that job. We do ourselves no favours by making promises we can't keep. Uh, most jobs aren't full of glamour, hype and sunshine. Uh, pretty much every job I can think of does have some uh, demands and challenges and boring bits to it. So we actually need to make that known to a candidate. In this day and age, people can get very easily and quickly connected into your organisation via the likes of Glassdoor or LinkedIn yeah, or similar sites to that. So by trying to um, hide the boring bits, the routine bits, the challenges, you know, we do ourselves, as I said, no favours. Um, it's also another really useful tactic um, pre-selection is to give our onboarding program a brand. Okay, so. Uh, certainly all of the uh, organisations that have successful onboarding programs that I've read about have a brand. They have a logo, they have a tagline, they have a name that communicates not only the experience but gives it a degree of presence, profile and uh, for those people going through the program gives them a sense of importance. Okay? Pre-boarding I put that in because I thought it was quite funny. Um, Pre-boarding is that really interesting period of time when somebody has accepted a position for a new organisation, psychologically more often than not already disengaged, but is still clocking into the current workplace. And we can use that period of time to our own advantage. Uh, this is the time when you want to be sending out your welcome packs, the administrivia, was that the, that's the word? That's the word. You here I'm first. Gonna, I'm going to remember that. So that's the time we want to get out all of that admin material out the door, the welcome letters, the background organisational information, the corporate HR policies. <coughs> it's the time we want to get the workspace organised, get the computer, the phone, the business cards all sorted out. This is a time that we can also usefully share team bios, blogs, photos, corporate newsletters. The more we can get our new hire connected into the corporate chatter, the more they're going to come up to speed with the lingo, the more they're going to come up to speed with the way we do things around here, and the more we're going to get them doing real work day one. And that's what it's all about. Rule three. Um, it's a well-known fact that people quit people before they quit organisations. So rule three is all about engaging the right people in the organisation to be our role models, to help guide that person into the organisation. And when I talk about network, when I talk about team, I'm talking about people inside the organisation, outside, I'm talking about um, up, down, across, suppliers, customers, you know, all of those people form the network and all of those people have an important role to play. Here I've got the team. Now each person in the team ideally has a unique role to play. Anybody, uh, any thoughts as to what the role of a peer is going to be in 
the onboarding of a new hire? What is the role of a peer? Make you comfortable. And more, more the unwritten yeah. stuff. Yeah, the buddy kind of mouth. Mm. The buddy, coach. yes. Social support, coach. I can ask you a question because I don't feel silly asking you, but I would if I asked my manager. Spot on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is exactly the role of the peer. Peers we often rely on for social support, the role model. So I'm going to watch what you do and learn from that. You know, if you've been um, reprimanded for something, I'm not going to make that same mistake. And they also are the ones that we will most typically rely on for task information that we're too embarrassed to ask the boss. I should know this by now, so I'm going to ask you rather than look really silly and ask the boss. What do you think we rely on the boss for, you know, the manager of a team in moving on board into a new organisation? What are we going to look to that person to help uh, provide us? Direction. Direction. Feedback. Feedback. Clarity on expectations. Clarity on expectations. Yeah, spot on. All of those things. So the boss or the manager is the person that we will most rely on for clarity around expectations, specifics around the task, the standards, evaluation. You're going to measure my performance. You're responsible for my rewards, recognition. So I'm going to be very clear on you know, I'm doing the right thing. What about direct reports? If you've got a direct report in your team, what's that person typically going to provide a new hire with? Any thoughts? Process. Process. Direct report can be a social support, but they are more often than not the people we rely on as a, an additional set of eyes and ears. This is how we really do things around here, yeah, the process. And finally, it's good in the network to have a buddy. The buddy is the non-judgmental support that I can rely on when things are tough. You know, this is the person who's been in the trenches with me, who understands what I've been through. Uh, Gallup, you know, know this. I think one of the questions in there is that Q12 is do you have a buddy at work? Yeah, it is hugely important. The key thing um, that I wanted to really um, demonstrate with this slide is that it's not necessarily about quantity, it is more about quality. And equipping that person with a relatively small set of network, uh, relatively small network that has both breadth and depth is more important than surrounding that person with lots and lots of superficial acquaintances. So it really is about finding targeted people who can support that onboarding process rather than just throwing lots of um, people at them. A number of researchers would also go as far as to say that if you did nothing else but focus on the network and making sure that you surrounded that person with a well qualified network then you are well on the road to onboarding success. If you did nothing else that is the number one thing to do. And of all of those relationships the relationship you have with your boss seems to be probably the most important connection to get right. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, probably came home very starkly to me in my own research that within uh, six weeks of entry, the very best predictor I found of whether or not somebody was still going to be around a year and a half down the track was the quality of that manager-employee uh, relationship. So within six weeks, I could predict whether or not an individual was going to be still in that organisation a year and a half down the track, given the quality of that boss-employee relationship. If that person was a great role model, if that person really took an active, engaged interest in the work their staff were doing, then that spoke volumes in terms of the uh, 
intentions that person had to stick around. There's a number of ways in which we can get our new hires connected um, and again get them up to speed as quickly as we can so that they're doing real work day one. Things such as uh, involving them in projects that's going to have them working cross-functionally. So getting them connected to other parts of the business that they might not normally have a relationship with. Getting them involved in different events so that they can get to learn about organisational dynamics team decision making, giving them time to socialise, so giving them time to have a cuppa, go out and have a drink with people they work with is hugely important in those, in those early days and weeks. Helping them find a buddy at work. Now, as we've already discussed, we can't manufacture that, but we can um, point them in the right direction. Uh, we can also get them connected into things like a newcomer club, so there's no reason we can't get our new hires working to, to coming together maybe once a quarter, again in a social context, so that they can share war stories, they can discuss lessons learned, uh, and again start networking with others inside the business. A lot of organisations uh, choose to leave networking to chance. I would argue that it is too important a period of time to, uh, to just leave it to, to chance that we do need to manage the first impressions our new hires get of the organisation. Uh, and I do believe that we need to um, make sure that we, we can manage as best we can who they're talking with and what those uh, messages are. 